Euros Madness, what's happening friends? Welcome back to the channel, Football Yannick, how's it going? Games, lots of games here on the first weekend of the Euros. I of course reacted to uh, Scotland getting absolutely battered um, in the opening game by Germany, not really showing anything. And there's been three games since yesterday, which I'm going to go re I'm going to react to today. I will also continue to do... Um, oh, publish my thoughts, upload my thoughts on the games, England, etc. as an England fan for my sins. Um, but I do want to speak about the games yesterday. Um, Switzerland beating Hungary, Spain beating, who they beat again? Croatia, of course, high profile matchup there. And of course, Italy beating Albania. So we'll go in chronological order. Thank you for being here. If you uh, enjoy my takes, my commentary, my opinion on football, non-Chelsea of course here on the channel, do consider subscribing to this uh, channel Football Yanning. Well, I will be here for you to talk about the big stories through across football. Transfers, uh, high profile matches like these, uh, all sorts of stuff really. Uh, we're going to start with Hungary versus Switzerland um, and yeah, a lot of people had the Swiss as favourites here, and that proved to be the case. Uh, Brilin Bomo, sort of still injured, he did come on at the end here. Uh, Hungary, I must I must say, I don't know many of the Hungary players. I know Galatsky, because uh, he had an amazing card on FIFA. Of course, you've got Saboz Lions, uh, Sazlai, and stuff like that. I can't pronounce the name, excuse me. Um... And yeah, look, man. Like I actually had a, <laughs> not that I promote betting, but I, I had a uh, a bet builder on this that Switzerland to there be over two goals in the game and Switzerland to win both halves, and I got ten to one, and uh, they could have still had this scoreline one uh, to Hungary, three to Switzerland. Had Hungary scored their goal in the second in the first half, so they still would have lost the first half. Anyway, enough about my failed uh, accumulators or bets or whatever. Um, Switzerland did win. They did look dominant. Of course, they scored two first half goals. And um, yeah, Hungary didn't really. They looked really, really passive. They did come back into it. Of course, they scored their goal by Varga in the 66th minute. Looked like they could do a little bit and sort of apply some pressure to the Swiss. But of course, that man, Briel and Bomo, comes on at the end, scoring a goal and just looking great, man. And Bolo is one of those strikers. I think he plays for Borussia Mojang Gladbach, doesn't he? But like, I don't think, I know he's had any long-term injury, but I never really see him doing bits for his club team. Well, what I mean is when I see him play for Switzerland, he always looks like this amazing striker. He's always this just such high profile, really effective striker that just does the bits, you know? And, um, and it's just every, every two years in an international tournament, I see it. But they've got an amazing team. Uh, Jan Sommer's a great goalkeeper. I mean, all three centre-backs are good. Rodriguez has been like a high-profile Swiss centre-back for a while now. Of course, they've got a Kanji. Wins everything with Man City. And Fabian Schaar, which is like a good Premier League operator. I mean, the midfielders as well. Freuler and Granit Xhaka. Xhaka has been incredible for um, well, He's been good for Switzerland for a long time, but of course he's just done an invincible title winning season as one of the most integral players to buy Leverkusen. And when they've got Briel and Bolo up, up top, they are good. Uh, Hungary are a good team. They can do it sometimes. Of course they slapped up England not so long ago. And I've still got PTSD regarding that. But yeah, the Swiss look like a serious, serious team. Like, you know, they should get out of the groups and see what they can do beyond. So let's go to the next game of the day which was Spain-Croatia. Of course, Croatia have been a good side for a long time, reaching, you know, podium finishes for um, international tournaments, whether it's third or second or whatever. And they've got that insane, of course, midfield. They don't have many goals in them. And I know they scored some before the season's kicked off, but that was the big, you know, concern. But of course, they've got the midfield of Brozovic, Kovacic and Modric. It's just incredible, really. Um... You know, Gavardiol was playing left back. Since the centre back, that's just a left back now, apparently, since Pep Guardiola got his hands on him. Uh, he's obviously really, really good, scintillating form at the end of the season for Man City, getting forwards a lot. But yeah, so it proved. I mean, I don't think. We talked about uh, how Scotland were really embarrassing, poor showing from them. They didn't do themselves any justice. I don't think Croatia were as bad as that. But, uh, but you know, they lost 3 0 to a Spain side. Um, 
uh, you know, a very good Spain side. Of course, Lamine Yamal, uh, Yamal, the 16-year-old winger getting an assist in this game, just showing that he does not give a so-and-so, despite being 15. Um, of course, Carviel scored as well, Morata scored, and Fabi Ruiz scored. Some good goals in there. Morata getting the opener, inevitable uh, Alvaro Morata. Looks, looks, hasn't aged a day since Chelsea signed him in 2017. I mean, maybe he did look very much like a child then, despite not being that young, but he just looks the same, Alvaro Morata. Uh, and he looks the same here, and he is, look, I, I heard a stat on the commentary that only two players have scored more goals in European Championships than uh, Alvaro Morata, which seems weird, but I'll take it as gospel. Interesting, Mark Cucurea, of course, plays for my club, Chelsea, had a Good end to the season for Pochettino, but he was playing very much this inverted role, which I don't think he was playing here for Spain. Um, Grimaldo, of course, is the alternative at left back for Spain, but he's a left wing back for Bayer Leverkusen. I know he's been sensational for them, scoring loads and loads of goals and getting assists and just being this amazing offen offensive threat. But clearly, Spain want to go with a more conventional left back who can defend deep. And of course, Cucurea can play left centre back in a three left back, so he's a much more conservative option, way more than the very attacking Grimaldo, who plays like a prolific winger at times, so I kind of understand, people, it was a talking point for some, but I, I didn't think it was a talking point, I understand why, for the balance of the team, they've gone for a Mark Cucurea here, um, yeah, Nico Williams up top, so yeah, you've got two young players flanking Morata, of course, the midfield of Ruiz, Rodri and Pedri is good as well, um, you know, you got Real Madrid players in the back line, Carvial, Nacho. It's a pretty Galactico team. It's not the best team you've ever seen. Like, you know, this, the the uh, substitutes like uh, Oyazabal. I can never say his name right. I hope I said that right. I mean, him, I guess, Danny Olmo and Ferran Torres are like high-profile substitutions. I mean, high-profile substitutions. Um, in terms of Croatia, I mean, the names you recognise, you recognise, you know, Perisic coming on, the t you know, ageless, timeless Perisic, and Pasalic wants of Chelsea as well. Yeah, it's not vintage Croatia, they've got a very small population, they've, you know, they've been amazing, like, better than they should have been for a long time, uh, but I wonder if now that sort of golden generation is petering out a little bit and yeah, losing 3-0 to Spain without laying a glove on them, really. I mean, they had a couple of moments, but... You know, it's it's not great. The Of course, the big talking point here is... I see sort of Croatia as like this robust side. And, you know, Spain is like the glory tick attacker days. But Croatia had 54% possession. And Spain, like, historically and traditionally, always have more possession. But they won't mind having less possession and winning 3-0. I guess maybe you could look at the Croatian midfield. You know, the aforementioned Brozovic. Brozovic. Kovacic and Modric, like amazing technical footballers, got the capacity to keep the ball. Still, um, yeah, like I said, they will not care one bit to have less of the ball and have three goals to nil. So the final game of the day was Italy versus Albania, and all the goals happened within the 16th minute, 2-1 to Italy, and then the game was sort of, it was watchable, it, it wasn't boring after that, but um, it was a the high octane start, of course, the fastest goal in Euros history. Twenty three seconds were um, <laughs> was it Demarco? It was Demarco. Did a throw in or attempted a throw in um, from sort of like near the left back area back to Gigi Donnarumma, and uh, was it uh, Bajrami? Just sort of picks up and goes, thank you very much, and slots it into the goal. Within 23 seconds, they'd gifted Albania a goal, which were heavy, who were heavy outsiders, of course. And uh, in the stadium, it was like, it looked like 80% Albanian fans, an incredible traveling support. Um, you know, not the best team. Of course, my affiliation with them, I mean, obviously they got Hisaj, whatever his name is, Hisai. At, uh, right back, um, Asani's good as well, but Bruyer as well, the, we know from the Premier League, Chelsea player still garnering a lot of interest, uh, cut a frustrated figure at times, uh, up top, let's think of Bruyer, people who train him, or see him train and coach him, know he's an amazing striker, but you, we just haven't seen it yet, I know he's still young, I know he had like an ACL, but I was saying on my Instagram that I feel he looked, 
he cuts a very frustrated figure sometimes to the point where it's his detriment, where he's like burning emotional energy through disappointment and frustration visibly, visibly on the pitch. I know he's young, but I just feel like um, I think he might get inside his own head quite a lot. But uh, yeah, they get their goal, they get their moment 23 seconds in. Uh, it doesn't take long for Italy to respond. Uh, Bastoni, far post, you know, big man, big man, defender, uh, sticking one in. And then Nico Barella, one falling to him, and he slashes it long range with a wonderful finish. And that's, you know, the 11th minute and the 16th minute, respectively. And that's it. And then, you know, they have a few more chances. They probably should have sewn the game up, sewn the game up. Um, and yeah, man, like, honestly, like, um, Spalletti, the Italy manager, was a little bit frustrated post-match. He feels like they tried too many passes and weren't direct enough and probably should have sewn the game up because there were chances towards the end of the game where Albania threatened a little bit. And when you've only got that precarious 2-1 uh, goal, um, score difference, excuse me, it is tricky. But still, some good football, I think, and... Um, we're off to a flyer in the Euro 2024. I can't wait to watch England. Probably give me a heart attack. Uh, I will react to those games as well. If you um, if you want my thoughts on how the games went, please do subscribe. It's nice to do just some Euro international content here on the channel as my screen somehow goes dark. Um, so yes, thank you. Do keep it locked. And um, hope to see you back here soon. Peace.